Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, so we have already uh, finished our syllabus, and this time we will be revising uh, our syllabus. So uh, in the last semester, we studied we about the uh, Delhi Sultanate. So this year, uh, we will start from where we concluded last time, in which was uh, the first battle of Panipat. So uh, our first topic of the syllabus would be advent of the Mughals and struggle for existence. So as we all know uh, that uh, Zahiruddin Muhammad Babar, he was the first ruler of the Mughal dynasty. He came from a distant land known as Fargana. If we have to find uh, Fargana now, uh, he fell under Transoxiana. Uh, uh, to go to Transoxiana, we have to, uh, if we have to find Transoxiana, we have to go to Uzbekistan. Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. So uh, all three, uh, all these three states, they, they made uh, Transoxiana. And Babur uh, used to rule over a small principality known as Fergana. So he ascended the throne at a very young age. At the age of 12, he became the ruler. And uh, uh, it was a tiny principality. So uh, he had many foes, actually. He had many competitors. So the area. As we know, uh, if we are to uh, look at it geographically, uh, it would be towards our northwest, towards the northwest of India. At that time, our boundary was existed up to our border was up to Afghanistan. So uh, uh, this uh, Fargana was not far. Uh, so the competitors uh, Babur had to face in his uh, early days were uh, the Uzbeks. Uh, they were a small tribe. Uh, they were actually Mongoloids who later on converted to Islam, and uh, he also faced challenge again, uh, challenges against the Safavids. The Safavid Persians uh, they considered themselves to be the descendants of Prophet Muhammad. They were Shias, so he had two competitors basically. Uh, so his aim, and he was the fifth genera uh, generation descendant of Taimur. So he took proud of uh, he was very proud of his ancestry. And he wanted to uh, spread his empire like uh, Taimur spread his empire. So, since he was ruling in a small principality, he wanted to extend his empire. So, what he did was, initially, he wanted to capture Samarkand. He laid siege on Samarkand many times. Uh, he laid on siege on Samarkand twice or thrice. Uh, most of the time, he was successful, but again. Uh, he had to face challenge against the uh, Uzbeks. The Uz Uzbeks sometimes uh, became superior, sometimes uh, Babur was able to capture uh, Samarkand. Samarkand was the cultural highway, um, it was the cultural capital of the Timurites. So, uh, this uh, Samarkand was very important for him, uh, I mean Babur. So, he won uh, Samarkand twice and the third time the Uzbeks overthrew him. So, he took uh, shelter with the Safavids, he took their help, and uh, third time he was uh, able to overthrow the Uzbeks and capture Samarkand. However, he didn't want to take the help of the uh, Safavids uh, because the main reason was that the Safavids were Shias and uh, Mughals were Sunnis. So there was a religious conflict as well. So he didn't want to take the help of the Safavids as such. So uh, he thought that it would be better if he could find this niche somewhere else, he wanted to carve a territory somewhere else. So he captured Kabul in due process, but he was not happy with Kabul as the, as the area was not that fertile. So while staying in Kabul, he had heard about India. The earlier invaders referred to India as the land of milk and honey. So he wanted to come to India and he wanted to expand his territories towards India. He never dreamt of conquering India initially. Later on, gradually he annexed India, but uh, somehow, he wanted to capture India. So, uh, what happened was that the political situation of India also favored him. Uh, during that time, uh, the uh, uh, Khiljis, uh, uh, the uh, Tughlaqs, uh, just uh, their reign came to an end and the Lodis came to power. The Lodis again were Afghans, they were not Turks. So, the Afghans came to power and Ibrahim Lodi came to power and uh, the Afghan chiefs, they didn't like Ibrahim Lodi much because the Afghans believed in decentralization of power uh, and uh, 
Ibrahim Lodi wanted to take the power in his own hands. So the Afghan chiefs were not very happy. One such chief was Daulat Khan Lodi. He was the governor of Punjab and he was not very happy with uh, Ibrahim Lodi. He wanted to overthrow him and take the throne of Delhi. So uh, uh, Babar, Babar came to know about it and he thought that it was a golden opportunity for him to interfere in the Indian affairs. So uh, uh, that is how Babar pl was planning to attack India. So it was, it was not that he suddenly attacked India and captured India. Uh, initially, he started his campaign, his campaign around 1520, 1520 to 21. He uh, attacked Sialkot and Lahore, and he was ab uh, about to capture whole of Punjab. Just at that time, a revolt broke out in Fargana, so he had to go back to Fargana and uh, putting the house in order. Uh, after putting the house in order, he decided to return back. Just at that time, uh, Daulat Khan Lodi thought that he needed an assistance. So he asked uh, Babar for his help. He sent messengers and Babar was, Babar was ready, to, ready to help and he wanted to carve his territory outside this Afghanistan area. So he was ready to help. So Babar marched with a huge army towards India and just as Babar was about to reach Punjab, uh, Daulat Khan Lodi sent a messenger saying that he, retract, he, he, he retracts from the invasion. He was not planning to attack Delhi. But Babar, since he had come too far, he marched towards Punjab and uh, the uh, Punjab army under Daulat Khan Lodi, he, he retreated. He, he was afraid of seeing the artillery power of Babar. So he retreated and eventually uh, Babar captured the whole of Punjab. So uh, after capturing Punjab, the next aim of Babar was to march towards Delhi. And in the Delhi, as we all know, uh, Ibrahim Lodi was ruling and Ibrahim came to know about it. Uh, he came with his force and Babar marched towards Delhi and uh, at a place known as Panipat. As we all know, there were three battles fought in Panipat. It was a conducive land for fighting and wars. It was a barren land. So uh, what happened was that uh, since it was near, uh, near uh, Delhi, so Babar uh, reached there and as soon as Babar reached there, Ibrahim Lodi also came there and a war ensued which was known as the First Battle of Panipat, 1526. The date would be 21st August uh, 1526. Now uh, Babar had comparatively a smaller army, but uh, the plus point with Babar was that uh, he had a very uh, good artillery power and uh, which shocked actually uh, uh, Ibrahim Lodi. What happened was that? The use of fire, firearms was not seen in India during that time. And what Babar did was, uh, he used it very effectively. So the matchlock man, the field cannon, everything shocked uh, Ibrahim Lodi's army. And uh, eventually, Babar defeated Ibrahim Lodi. And Ibrahim Lodi, along with 15,000 soldiers, died in the battlefield. And which made, eventually, Babar the ruler of the Delhi Sultanate. The territories were... Ibrahim Lodi was ruling. He already captured Punjab, so he was ruling over a bigger area. And uh, uh, during this time, uh, Babar was, felt that he could uh, maybe uh, capture more areas. And just, uh, it was not that it was a very easy thing to do because the Rajputs were very powerful in northwest uh, area, in the Rasputana. The uh, Vijayanagar Empire was flourishing in the south, but still, it gave Babar a ray of hope, the Battle of Panipat. So we can not belittle the importance of Panipat. Uh, the importance lies in the fact that at least Babar was uh, planning. Now he dreamt of invading uh, or capturing the whole of India. So uh, the major enemies were the Rajputs and he knew that the, uh, next he would be challenged by the Rajputs. So he had to fight with the Rajput Confederacy. Uh, the leader of the Confederacy was the ruler of he was the, his name was Rana Sangram Singh. Uh, we better know him, uh, know, know him by the name Rana Sangha. So Rana Sangram Singh was the ruler of Mewar and Rana Sangram Singh, uh, with the help of the Rajput Confederacy, he uh, attacked Babar and a war ensued at a place known as Khanwa. It is in Rajasthan now. And in the Battle of Khanwa in the year 1527, the Rajputs were defeated and killed by the uh, the Rajputs were defeated and Rana Sangram Singh was killed by Babar. And it was a decisive victory because the whole Rajputana 
we can say it uh, surrendered to Babur. So Babur was now ruling over the whole of Punjab, the Rajputana, also uh, he defeated the Rajputana rulers and now he was ruling over Delhi. So he was now ruling over a very big area. So that is why the battle of Khanwa is very important. And it was very very necessary to defeat the Rajputs because uh, he knew that they would, uh, they would pose challenge later on. As we can see later on Rana Sangram Singh's um, uh, grandson, we all know him, Rana Pratap, he also posed challenge against uh, Akbar. So uh, after Khanwa, Babar felt a bit strengthened and after that the next aim of Babar was to uh, defeat all the neighboring territories and capture the whole of North India. So next aim uh, was to uh, capture the North uh, side and the Middle um, uh, Central India. So next he attacked Chanderi which, uh, which is in Malwa and then uh, after cap capturing uh, Chanderi the whole of Delhi Agra region came under him. So you see uh, first he captured Punjab then uh, the Delhi and the neighboring territories then he defeated the Rajputs. Now he captured this northern part of India and the central part of India. He captured Malwa. Uh, so he now became the, uh, he was very nicely placed in Delhi Agra region. So next aim was uh, to capture all the forts east of Agra. Next he captured Gwalior, which is in Madhya Pradesh, present day, and Dholpur, which is also in central India. So he eventually became the master of. West India, Northwest India, and Central and North India. Okay, so uh, but uh, it was not an easy work. Uh, as soon as he captured all these uh, territories, the Afghans again started to pose threat because the Afghans were still very powerful uh, in the areas uh, which were in Eastern UP and uh, Bihar. So uh, and uh, the Nawab of uh, the Sultan of Bengal, his name was Nusrat Shah. He was the son-in-law of Ibrahim Lodi. He was aiding them, the Afghans. So, uh, he, this, Babar knew that he had to fight a final war against the Afghans uh, and the Afghans were now backed by a powerful Sultan, the Sultan of Bengal, Nusrat Shah. So, uh, in the year 1529, another battle ensued between the Afghans who, are, who, was, who, were, who was backed by the, the Afghans were backed by the Sultan of Bengal, his name was Nusrat Shah. So, uh, the final battle ensued uh, between the Afghans. It was not the final battle. Uh, it was the final battle in the life of uh, Babur. Uh, between the Afghans who were backed by Nusrat Shah and Babur. And it was an indecisive battle. It was, a, it was an indecisive battle. We can't say that uh, Babur defeated the Afghans and Nusrat Shah. And uh, since it was indecisive, uh, so Bengal and this Bihar area, it was still under the control of the Afghans. And later on in this area, another young Afghan ruler, uh, he would uh, become supreme and he would again defeat a Mughal ruler named Umayyo and he would later on uh, become the ruler of India. His name is Sher Shah Suri. We will discuss about him in the next class. So uh, this is how uh, Babar, it, it was the last battle he fought, he returned back to Agra and he died in the year 1530. So uh, this is how it all ended. Babur was able to carve an empire which was slightly bigger than the Delhi Sultanate but still we can't call it an empire because he was not able to capture whole India. Still northeastern India was outside his control, still south India was outside his control, still some parts of north India was outside his control. So these areas will be later on captured by his successors um, from Akbar to Aurangzeb. So gradually they will capture but still Babur was somehow able to carve an empire. Since he was ruling over a very tiny principality known as Fargana, so it was a very big task for him to carve out a, such a big kingdom or we can call it an empire uh, at his own and uh, we, could, we can give him credit for that. So uh, as he died, it was his last wish that his last uh, mortal remains should be buried in Kabul. So. Uh, the tomb was raised near Agra, but later on the mortal remains were taken back to uh, Kabul. And uh, so uh, this is how it ended. And as soon as Babur died, so there was a tradition among the Timurites that uh, the empire, the, there was a successor, but the empire would be divided equally among the sons. 
so the successor was Humayun, as we all know, and he had his brothers, uh, Mirza Suleiman, who was given Badakshan, Mirza Kamran, who was given Kabul and Kandahar, and Askari and Hindal, who was given Northern Indian territories. So this is how uh, it was divided among the brothers. Humayun became the ruler of um, uh, Delhi and the uh, neighboring territories. But uh, Humayun was not as capable as his father, Baba. So what happened next was that, as we all know that Afghans were still creating troubles for them. And as I have already said that uh, later on, a uh, young boy, uh, his name was uh, Farid, later on he came to be known as Shesha, uh, he would uh, defeat Humayun. And he defeated Humayun and uh, Humayun had to flee India. He eventually fled India and he had to take refuge in Persia under the Safavids. Okay. And he had to suffer hardships in Persia as well. Because as I said, Safavids were Shias. And we have some reference that the Safavids even forced him to accept Shiaism. So uh, he had to face some hardships. But uh, then again, uh, the Sher Shah came into power. Uh, we have already discussed about Sher Shah in the last semester. Since our uh, um, the theme is Turku Afghan, so this Afghan uh, part was included in the third semester syllabus. So we have already discussed about Sher Shah in the third semester. So uh, the, this time, I am uh, in the next class, I am going to discuss a little bit about Sher Shah. I am just going to remind you uh, what we have discussed in the last semester because otherwise the chronology would be difficult to maintain. So we have to discuss about Sher Shah. And as I said, Sher Shah defeated Humayun, he came to power. Again, after the death of Sher Shah, the Afghans again became weak. Sher Shah was an Afghan, as I have already said. He again became weak and Humayun, he again returned back to India. And uh, somehow defeated the Afghan 